Hi, this is Ronick from Ask Audio. Welcome to this short video on using the Machina Jam to control Logic Pro 10. I'm using a very early beta version of the control script, which as you can see on my screen, I've got the Native Instruments Controller Editor open, and it's the Mackie Control Lite created by the product manager of the Machina Jam. Um, it's certainly not in its finished state. Uh, so I've actually made a couple of amendments to it and hopefully I haven't broken anything. But with Machina Jam launching tomorrow, you can expect in Q4 or perhaps earlier to have a new version of the Mackie Control Lite for Machina, which means you'll be able to use it to control Logic, uh, Pro Tools, uh, Cubase, and anything else, any other DAW that supports that protocol. So Machina Jam is a really good Machina software controller fantastic for step sequencing, really good fun to play and to use, good feel to it. These touch strips are brilliant to play notes on, quite cool to mix on too. So how does it translate to using it in Logic? Well, again, I've got limited functionality, but let's have a quick look of how that works. Only certain buttons have been mapped. Most of these pads haven't been, and I've added some mapping to these top rows here as well. Okay, so starting off, um, let's go to looking at the transport. So down here, we've got the play button. As you'd expect, you hit play again and you'll start playback from the original area that you began. The stop button is over here, which is tempo. Again, you could probably change this very easily in the editor. Um, we've got record button as well. I don't have any input selected, but basically what you'll do is you'll uh, arm and start recording on the selected track. So we've got quite a few tracks in this project. And this project, by the way, is The Fire by Stereo Spread, and it's well worth checking out. It's a great track. Go and uh, check out their music on SoundCloud, and thank you to them for letting me use this. Um, but basically, I can go between the different banks of tracks in eight by using these two buttons. And as you can see in the mixer, that white bar appears at the bottom there to show you which tracks are currently selected. And so we're back at the first bank of eight. And now I can use the D-pad here, up, down arrows, to go through the different tracks. So there's a couple of other cool things you can do though. Let's go back here. So this is the flip mode button. Uh, so at the moment, I'll show you why that's important. At the moment, with these, uh, the first bank selected, um, I can actually mix with the different faders here, as you can see on the screen. Probably more fun if you can actually hear it. I can use the rotary encoder to move myself through. And I can mix these, carry on through here. Etc, etc. Okay, uh, a couple of other things you can do as well. So, okay, I can adjust the levels, but with the select or the flip button uh, pressed down and engaged, I can now pan, as you can probably just see from the screen there. If I hit play, I'll see something that's quite obvious. So. That's pretty cool. What else can you do? Well, uh, let's go back to a track. I can use a D-pad, of course, to, uh, to scroll through the different tracks. Um, and you can mute tracks. Each of these buttons relates to the track below it. So whichever bank you have selected, that will affect that track. So and uh, I've actually engaged these buttons as uh, the solo buttons. So that's kind of cool. Okay. So that's basically navigating, and of course you can use... Oh, I haven't shown you this. This is quite cool. Right, so let's turn off the grid. Right, so... Uh -huh. 
couple of small uh, glitches here. But anyway, so I can use uh, this rotary encoder to scrub through, well, scroll through the project. It's not in scrub mode. Um, once I hit this browse button, I can then use it to go through at a much finer, finer rate indeed. Hit that again and we're back to normal. Now if you want to cycle an area of your track, uh, you can use the loop button here, grid. Uh, I simply hit it and then as I move the rotary encoder, and then I'm actually creating a cycle area. Hit it once more and now I can move around. Hit play, of course. We're going to be cycling that section. If I hit the grid button again, bam, it's gone. So we're out of cycle mode. And uh, for Logic users that know, you can also use that for the skip cycle as well. You simply just, uh, let's go back there. Okay, so I simply do anti-clockwise with the rotary encoder and uh, just press that again. And now, of course, when we play from here, it will skip that area. Like so. Okay, we have a couple of other things I've programmed in too. Um, we've got screen sets, so I can switch between the different screen sets. So that's screen set one, that's screen set two, and here's screen set three, which is just the mixer. Bam, bam, we can start mixing and do all our stuff. Great. Um, I've enabled these as uh, the record modes. If I try hitting one, you'll see um, it says no input selected because I haven't got an input selected. All right. There are a couple of other things you can do as well. Um, I've programmed uh, an EQ button in here, uh, but basically if I select, just give me a second, if I, if I select a track and then hit EQ, it should come up, yep, there you go. So an EQ then is inserted on this track and appears on the track. You can actually program in certain buttons to then adjust different bands within the EQ plugin itself, which is kind of cool. Um, other things you can do, looked at muting, soloing, the zooming would be great. I had that working before, uh, hit a couple of glitches, so I can't show you, but basically I was using the D key to, or the D keys to uh, zoom in, zoom out vertically and horizontally. Oh yes, another thing you can do as well is um, go into read mode. I can turn read mode on and off depending on the track that it is selected. So again, I can go and select this track for example. Um, which track is that? Yeah, there. Okay, I can solo it. We can play it. Let's go back a little bit. quite cool because you can see the flashing lights make it very easy to distinguish exactly where you are. Okay, so that's like uh, turning read automation on and off, but what about if you want to write automation? Pretty easy. Um, I've programmed this to be, I oh know, sorry, I programmed that button to be latch mode. And now essentially if I hit record, I oh know, play even. I can record in some automation. Okay, I'll hit stop. And uh, let's just have a look quickly here to see the automation that's been written. And there you, can, there you can see it. Okay, so this is a really brief overview of some of the functionality that we're expecting Machina Jam to have when controlling Logic and other DAWs as well. And uh, I've got to say, I've been pretty impressed with Machina Jam. Um, one thing I'd love to do when controlling Logic is convert these, these beautiful touch strips into uh, very much like what they do in note mode in the Jam, uh, on the Jam for Machina software. So to, pe to play notes, to strum, I think that'd be really cool. I'm sure there's some uh, clever tricks I can figure out or somebody can figure out in Logic's environment to do that. Uh, so for now, this is what you can do before the release of Jam. Stay tuned for more videos, more reviews of the Jam, and a video course coming very soon. And uh, thank you for watching.